How do you wish to die? This is a very solemn question, and I'm sure most of us would say, I want to die quickly, painlessly, peacefully. Maybe we would want to be with those that we love, have them hold our hand as we're on our deathbed. But ultimately, we cannot control these things. We do not have control over how we die. But if I were to ask how, as in what state do you wish to die, you have complete control over that. Our death, it is heaven is heavily connected with the way we live. Physically, if one is to live by the sword, he will likely die by the sword. Matthew 26, 52. And of course, other foolish lifestyles will lead to foolish ends. Our lives, they are connected with our death. The man who said, let me die the death of the righteous. He's known for a few things. He's known for being dumber than a donkey. This may seem like a, a reasonable or an eloquent statement even, but when we consider the life of Balaam, we see just how foolish this statement is. How many are there that desire, wish, long for the death of the righteous, but the life of the righteous is completely foreign to them. As we're looking at the life of Balaam, let's first consider that he had a skewed view of righteousness. He did not have a correct idea of what it was. First, he thought it was an op- he thought that righteousness was a lost opportunity to partake in pleasure. The first mistake he made, in fact, was lodging evil bribers sent by King Balak. A true prophet would have sent them out just as he saw them at the door. But he invites them in. He lets them stay. King Balak's request that he would curse the children of Israel, it would never never be met. And why is that? Because this people, they are the seed that will bring forth Messiah, that will bless all of humanity. And God would not allow this wish to be granted. Let's look at Numbers 22 and verse 13. If if you will please turn with me there. Numbers 22, 13. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. I think of a child that says to his friend, I can't come over. Dad said no. Oh, Balaam wants to go, but God won't, let, God won't let him. And he sees it as a lost opportunity to get gain. This is, in a way, the opposite of how God dealt with Jonah. God told Jonah, go, and he said, no. God told Balaam, do not go with these men. He said, oh, but I want to. They're going to give me riches and honor. When sin approaches us, when temptation approaches us, what will our answer be? When our friends say, come to this party, it's going to be a great time, and we know that sin will be present. Will we say, I can't go, or will we say, I won't go? There is a difference, and we need to know it. We can see right through his facade of being righteous like he thought he was. Balaam thought that righteousness was something that could be questioned. He thought it was something that could change on a whim. Balak sent back these messengers after being rejected the first time, and he sent them with an offer that Balaam could not refuse. Because Balaam did not hate the sin, the sin grew more enticing to him. There's something to learn from that. When we read verses 18 and 19, we see Balaam's true intentions. 
And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me the more. Balaam already had an answer, did he not? In the previous verse, God told him, do not go. Do not curse my people, for they are blessed. How many congregations, how many elderships, when they decide to restudy an issue, such as instrumental music, such as female leadership in worship, how many of them go through that study and come out on the side of truth? They do not seek the truth. They, in fact, are trying to find their own truth. God has given us the answer. The Lord has spoken. We know where to find the answers. In no circumstances, evil become good. Not one. God tells him a statement of fact, not so much a command, that Balaam, you're going to speak the words that I tell you to speak. Because you're not going to have a choice in the matter. I'm not going to allow you to curse my people. Balaam, of course, he would be on that road with his donkey, and he would encounter that angel, and he would say, I have sinned, 2234. But he did not truly repent. And how do we know that? Because his actions, they did not change in the slightest. Balaam thought that righteousness could be present in a life full of compromise. Like we read in the statement behind me, Numbers 23, 10. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. And of course we say, Balaam, you're not living the life of the righteous. I'm sure he thought, well, technically, I'm obeying God. He did say, go, I'm going. He did say, speak, and I am speaking. But he was trying to fulfill his own intentions. Any man that seeks his will over God's, his soul will face judgment every time. He wanted very badly to curse these people and get the reward. He told Balak when he blessed instead of cursed, I told you this wouldn't work. I'm, I had to say the words that God tells me. He's like trying to act righteous when he knows he's not being righteous. He wanted to curse them. Oh, how he wanted to curse them. He was not heard by God, however. And actually, he was a danger to the children of Israel, which God delivered them from. Joshua 24.10. We need to be weary. We need to be careful of the attitude. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. That idea is not biblical. It is not righteous. We cannot deceive God with our thoughts and our intentions. God is not mocked. And that is true whether I say it or not. He will not be mocked. Now let's see, Balaam, he had a love for something. But that was a love of unrighteousness. 2 Peter 2.15, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. That is what his heart went towards. He desired these wages so badly he tried three times to curse Israel. None of the times worked at all. He said, let's try over there. Let's see if it works over in this location. Let's see if sacrifices will help. Of course, none of them did. His love for unrighteous riches, it drove him to find a way to hurt God's people. He could not get God to curse them, but he got them to curse God. And brethren, that is still the case today. No man can cause God to curse us. Oh, but they can cause us to curse God. 
we must be careful that never happens. Revelation 2.14, he threw a stumbling block before them. He told Balak, get them to go after idols. Get them to fornicate. And he knew that that could work. I ask you again, how do you wish to die? We can die the death of the righteous. And we do so by abhorring that which is evil and cleaving to that which is good, Romans 12, 9. We do it by hating every false way, Psalm 119, 104. Balaam, however, he did not get his wish. He would die by the sword, the same death as idolatrous kings, number 31, 8. The wicked will be judged, but we can also remember the free gift of grace is there for all who cherish righteousness. Thank you.